Yeah, you heard it right. Great Britain has advanced in the World Baseball Classic qualifying tournaments. Former Mariner, current Mariner TV analyst Ryan Roland Smith, friend of ours here at the network, was on the call. Ryan, good to see you, man. Talk about this Great hey. Britain squad. This is a nice story. Yeah, it is. It really is. And look, I'm not going to lie, man. I come from a you know, non-baseball country. I come from Australia. I've represented uh, Australia in the Olympics and the World Baseball Classic a couple times. But, uh, you know, when I look at these rosters, you know, when I look at Great Britain, and they've got, you know, 10 affiliated players, 10 prospects that the organization has allowed to go and play at an event like this. Usually, I look at this and say, hey, look, you know, all these kids, they grew up in the US, you know what I mean? Like, it's not like they're coming out of London and they've been playing cricket their whole life. And then I think to myself, hey, like, you know, is that the same thing? But then when you hear the stories and you hear what these guys are representing, it could be that grandparent or that, you know, that one parent who grew up in the UK. You know, some of the storylines throughout these World Baseball Classic qualifiers have been the best. They were a stud team. They were so much fun to watch and they're going to be fun to watch uh, in March. They're going to be competitive. They've got a good squad. I mean, seeing a Union Jack flag being waved around in a baseball park, I think it's the first time I've seen that since uh, the Who played the Oakland Coliseum touring the uh, It's Hard album in 1981. That was pretty cool to see. Uh, but there was a Mariners prospect, I guess, that's kind of led the way here. You talk about the 10 affiliated players and one that works for uh, the club you work for as well, Harry Ford. Yeah, this kid, man. I mean, you know, I heard good things about him. I've never seen him in person, but... Uh, what an absolute stud. I was blown away. This kid, he's 19 years old. He's a catcher, but he's extremely athletic too. He can run well. And he has kind of that, that Julio energy about him, Julio Rodriguez, when you talk to him. You know, he was so enthusiastic to be there in Germany. And, and you know, just when you have those conversations and you see how he interacts, I like to watch how these guys, they interact, you know, in between innings and, and you know, how they are around their teammates. And this kid's on another level. So, it really excited if you're a Mariners fan uh, to see him coming up and uh, good to see him again. We're going to see him in the World Baseball Classic against the world's best. So it's going to be fun. Yeah, before we get to the Mariners, I guess you're off to Panama next for the next round of qualifying games. What do you expect there? You know, it's a lot. It's it's interesting. And, and like I said, I come from a place you know, in Australia where it's a non-essential. It's, it's, it's a non-baseball country. It's a place where you have these rosters that are, they're either built um, you know, for all, you know, within like the Czech Republic who qualified from, from Germany, or you have these teams that are built from all over the world where they have some sort of lineage to that country. So, you know, when you look at Panama, you, you have that mixed bag as well. And this is what I love about these tournaments. Uh, a couple things. Number one, they are really tough to research when you're in the booth, you know, covering um, these teams. They're really, they're tough to research because half these rosters are built from guys that we just don't see every single day. You know, it's easy when you, when you cover a Mariners game. The other thing I like too is that when you're watching these games, and this is something that was it was a big deal for me, you know, being an A-ball kid going to the 2006 World Baseball Classic. You got to remember, man. I mean, some of these guys will they'll never play in the big leagues. They'll never play at the highest level. But all of a sudden, they're getting a chance to qualify to go be on the same field as a Team USA, you know, 60 feet away facing Mike Trout. It's insane when you think about it. Yeah. Or the guys who, you know, didn't quite get to the big leagues, they've you know, had a 10-year 10, 10 run in the minor leagues. Now, all of a sudden, they get to be on that stage. So that's why I love, you know, watching some of these qualifiers and seeing these teams just, just dying to get to, the, to uh, the World Baseball Classic. Well, you're putting out a great appeal to watch these games. So where can fans tune in to the Panama qualifying round if you i mean you go to worldbaseballclassic.com you can even catch on you go to mlb.com uh, you can see the link there um you know for the world baseball classic they're all free you, they're even in the um i had a few friends watching some mariner people watching harry ford through mlb tv you can catch it on that as well but if you go to worldbaseballclassic.com that's where you see you know the up the upcoming games uh, and that's where you can watch it all for free. So it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, let's uh, let's switch to the Mariners now. And, I, you know, I, I have to hit you with this because it's not every day that you give up an 11 run inning to blow a, a lead that looked like it was salted away in what was a pretty meaningful game for the M's. Uh, your experience as a player and your experience around this year's Mariners, how do they bounce back after that yesterday? Yeah, you know, that was tough. And, and you know, good thing they got an off day today because there was some just bad energy. Look, this road trip, they went three and seven on this road trip. And they've lost Julio Rodriguez, who, you know, is their spark plug at the, at the top of that at the top of that lineup. He uh, has a back issue, but he's going to be back, you know, for that, that last weekend. They're missing Eugenio Suarez. It was tough. But I will say this. It's kind of a blessing in disguise. And what I mean by that is that when you're on a team that, 
you know, is essentially they're going to go to the playoffs. They're going to go to the postseason the first time in 20 years. They're exhausted, but they keep looking up and saying, yeah, we're good. All of a sudden you have a game like that and it kind of slaps you in the face a little bit. So, so you get back and you, they've got this massive homestand. Everyone's going to come out. I mean, they're selling out every single night. And you look at that and say, okay, we can't get too comfortable here. Luis Castillo just signed that huge deal, comes out in the sixth and just gets rocked. You can't get too comfortable. So I think that wake-up call happened at the right time. They can go home. They can get energized. They get their players back at the end of this homestand and then roll into the postseason you know, with some good vibes. You just don't want to see them roll into that first series after waiting 20 years of playoff drought and then just get rolled because they're exhausted like you saw um, the game yesterday against the Royals. Well, a lot of people feel, Ryan, and, and you know this, you hear the conversations as well, like the Mariners have enough pitching to make a really good run this year. But for you, knowing uh, the postseason and the field being defined for the most part, do you have a World Series, uh, you know, heads-up prediction for us? Well, look, I've got to go safe. And, and, and matter of fact, I was thinking about this all day long, and, and people are going to hate me for this, especially up here in the Northwest, but i got to say, man, the Houston Astros, they are going to be tough to beat in that in the American League. Uh, a couple of things. Obviously, you know, the depth, their, 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 their pitching staff. I mean, you're talking about, you know, uh, Framber Valdez. You're talking about, um, you know, obviously Justin Verlander, what he's doing. You have the, the, the depth, but also to the experience. And then I think when I'm looking at them in the National League, I'm going to have to go with the Dodgers. And I, I see the Dodgers taking on the World Series. But I will say this, if you do want a sneaky pick and if the price is right for a lot of your viewers, hey, look, take on the Mariners too. Don't sleep on the Mariners. You've got Robbie Ray, Luis Castillo. They match up better than anyone for game one, game two. Uh, they can make a run at it for sure. But, man, I just, being in the American League West, covering the Mariners, watching the Houston Astros, they are going to be tough to beat in the AL where I'm at. Man, I agree with everything you just said. Two to one to win the pennant and that specific 10 to one to win the pennant, uh, rather the uh, Mariners. And if you like that matchup that, uh, that Ryan just identified, Astros Dodgers again, I know it's a movie that we've all seen. I get it, but it plays uh, pays plus 800 for your dollar. Ryan, thanks for the visit, man. It's always good to see you. Have fun in Panama and we'll uh, we will tap into and check you out later when you come back. Sounds good, man. Appreciate it.